Good evening. It's Tuesday, April 20, 2021, here in Cebu City. I'm Cherry Ann Lim, and this is Sunstar Tonight. The Commission on Human Rights in Central Visayas says Richie Nepomuceno, the slain complainant against the controversial 11 Sawangkalero cops, had declined to avail of security under a witness protection program. This despite her having received death threats from one of the policemen she had accused of abuse. Chari Coronel reports. The slain complainant against the controversial Sawang Calero police officers did not avail of the security detail under the Witness Protection Program. Commission in Human Rights Central Visayas Chief Investigator Leo Villarino said that Richie Nipomoceno declined their offer despite receiving death threats from one of the police officers after she sought their help against them who allegedly raped and extorted from her. Nipomuseno was killed by two men on board a motorcycle in Barangay Basak Pardo, Cebu City last night. Hours after she was killed, Police Staff Sergeant Celso Colita, one of the controversial Sawang Calero police officers, found dead inside the comfort room of the Regional Special Operations Group. Nipomuseno accused Colita of raping her twice while she was in police custody. On March 9, Colita and his group implemented a search warrant at Nipomuseno's residence after they were informed about her involvement in the illegal drugs. According to a report from Help TV Cebu, Regional Drug Enforcement Unit Chief Glenn Hefe was interviewing Colita about the killing of Nipomuseno and his involvement in illegal drugs. Hefe said, Colita did not reply and instead asked for permission to go to the comfort room. Then he heard a gunshot coming from the CR and found Colita lying in blood. CHR said Nipomusino told them that Colita was threatening her. The Cebu City Police Office is now looking into involvement in illegal drugs and love triangle as the motives on the killing of Nipomusino. CHR said they cannot deny the fact that the death of the complainant has a major impact in their investigation. Villarino encouraged the other complainants to continue to cooperate in the investigation despite the fear. Chare Coronel, Sunstar Tonight. Some officials of the Cebu City government who are senior citizens were vaccinated against COVID-19 today. Meanwhile, Mandawi City will start its vaccination of senior citizens tomorrow. Kenneth Torres reports. Some Cebu City officials have received the COVID-19 vaccine today during the second day of inoculation of senior citizens in the city. Vice Mayor Michael Rama together with City Councilor Joy Augustus Young, Leah Japson and Raul Alcuseba have been vaccinated with Sinovac in Robinson's Galleria. Rama said that they want to encourage other senior citizens to get the vaccine. The city targets to vaccinate 1,000 senior citizens in a day. Meanwhile, the Mandawi City vaccine board will start its inoculation tomorrow at the Mandawi City Cultural and Sports Complex. 500 senior citizens from Barangays Subang Daku, Tabuk, and Kabangkalan will be the first to be vaccinated. Ernie Manatad, the chairman of the City Vaccine Board, said they already informed them of their scheduled time of vaccination. The inoculation will start at 8.30 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. He added they will be provided with transportation. Kenneth Torres, Sunstar Tonight. Mandawa City Mayor Jonas Cortez has recovered from coronavirus disease. The mayor is now back in his office after two weeks in isolation. Chari Coronel reports. Mandawi City Jonas Cortez has recovered from COVID-19 and is now back to work. Cortez said he was under isolation for two weeks. The mayor said that they decided to have the RT-PCR test on April 3 when his wife, First Lady Sarah Walker Cortez, experienced shortness of breath. The result came out on April 4. Cortez tested positive while his wife tested negative. He added he immediately informed his close contacts of his result. The mayor was isolated in their house first and eventually transferred to a private isolation facility. 
Cortez said now that he is back in his office, he will focus on the vaccination program of the city. He expressed willingness to be inoculated and encouraged his constituents to have themselves vaccinated as well. The city will start inoculating its senior citizens tomorrow. Chare Coronel sa start tonight. The redevelopment of the Patria de Cebu is seen to help uplift tourism in the region. The new mixed-use development will incorporate an international hotel at the heart of downtown Cebu City. Kenneth Torres reports. The Department of Tourism Central Visayas believed that the redevelopment of Patria de Cebu will usher the culture and faith tourism in the country. DOT Central Visayas Director Shalimar Tamano said they noted spots of recovery in some tourist destinations in the region like Mualbual and Bantayan affected by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, a property developer, Cebu Landmasters Incorporated, broke ground on the mixed-use complex on the site of the old Patria de Cebu. This is also a in time for the Queen's centennial celebration of the introduction of Christianity in the country. The CLI and the Archdiocese of Cebu said the final design of the project, which was approved by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, is committed to preserve the historic edifice of the Patria. The mixed-use development will offer 21,000 square meters of gross floor area and incorporate an international hotel with 182 rooms at the heart of downtown Cebu City. Patria de Cebu's redevelopment will offer 4,320 square meters of food, dining and entertainment spaces, and 4,400 square meters of offices. There will be a large central interior plaza for cultural and other gatherings. The rooftop will also be a venue for alfresco events. The ballroom and meeting rooms of the Mercure Cebu downtown, which is set to open in 2024, will also host social and business gatherings. The hotel will be operated by French national chain Accor, a world-leading hospitality group. The CLI's collaboration with the Archdiocese covers the development and operation of the mixed-use project for 40 years. Kenneth Torres, Sunstar Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Cherry Ann Lim. Thanks for watching Sunstar Tonight. See you again tomorrow. Good night.